Hello everyone, this is Blender Guppy. Welcome to another demo video of the Creative Bundle add-on. So uh, in this video, I'm going to use Random Flow, Creative Flow, and maybe uh, Final Cut. So I'm just going to test the uh, shading feature in Random Flow. This is not in the store yet, but will be in the upcoming update. So add Bevel Node and up in Materials. And in this video, I'm going to models uh, a syringe so i'm playing this game again and it has this syringe 3d asset and it looks really simple and interesting so i'm going to try and model it okay and hope I'm gonna do something about the uh the liquid inside. So from the game, the liquid is like in the pushing apparatus here. The liquid is filled to the brim, but I'm gonna I'm going to do something like uh so this is the pushing apparatus um, mechanism. So the liquid is going to be like uh kind of like the vial is ha uh almost I mean. Uh, quarter empty so if 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 we rotate the the um the model the liquid also acts uh in relation to the uh to the down uh direction which is the ground so if we like turn it this way so the liquid will go that way so it kind of goes like this, so the same level. Hopefully the Boolean system, I think the Boolean system could actually do that along with the constraint. What is smooth. And inset and control mouse drag to increase the offset probably increase its height and i'm going to uh, to create an edge here that will be that will serve serve as a snapping point when i use the add intersect object so add intersect object We'll add uh, these two shapes here based on the average location of the selected elements. If there is no selection, it will um, position itself on the position uh, location of the 3D cursor instead. So right at the side view. So that's number three in your numpad or control number three on uh, for the other side. So, wait, positive, yeah. This is the right side and this is the left side. So three is the right side. So we're now, we are now facing the positive x-axis. Add intersect object, cylinder, view. So align to view. So before, uh, when I was just new to modeling, uh, I thought that uh, you can just do everything as Unimesh, meaning that I could just uh, create um, extra topology here and somehow extrude this kind of topology from that. Uh, so not really ideal. So it's best to just uh, create a separate element, may it be an object mode or an edit mode. So for example, this one so a separate set of faces instead of just extra, uh, creating a topology here to, to extrude the shape and it will basically wreak, uh, wreak havoc on the shading of on this area so much better if it's just a uh, separate set of uh, faces instead of being uh, created as a unimesh so we will eventually use the 
join objects operator here to uh, to join the elements that we've modeled but right right for right now we are just modeling everything uh, separately in object mode and let's mirror this auto mirror in the x axis and auto smooth So if you can just delete the faces that are hid, hid, uh, hidden from you. So I'm just saving this syringe sir one. Okay. And right here is the where the fingers go 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 in. So add intersect and using this view, add intersect cylinder and view and just edit the uh, geometry so when i i use this object when i use the operator so it basically inherited its origin center so when we use the auto mirror it will everything will line up Oops, there's no axis, x axis. And go to, so create a little space uh, in this area. So the uh, bevel node shader later will work and make it look like this part is not separated and the model is actually a single object. Make it look like it's, uh, it's joined in this area. But it only works for cycles so for moving do not, uh, I'm not gonna move it in object mode because it will disturb the it will also move the origin center because we're in object mode so transforming this I'll go in edit mode that and selecting these two faces here inset and make sure that I cover this or basically go past that geometry then with this face selected, control E, bridge, bridge, edge loop. And we auto smooth. Okay. So I'm not using any reference here, so maybe this is probably too far. So selecting these two objects, two separate objects, go to edit mode and move at the same, move them at the same time. I can probably move this away from the center line because I'm using snapping on the mirror and once they touch touch each, uh, touch each other in the center line, you can't separate them anymore. Unless you go to the modifier stack and turn off clipping. Okay, so we have that. We'll just probably make it closer to this to this area. And also uh, create the same ring here, which is probably the thumb to push the, uh, push the, um, wait a minute, probably too small. Let's make it bigger. Make sure that this is hidden. And we're going to do the same thing uh, in this area. Create uh, this ring also. Okay, and we can't really. So duplicating this, you know, it's using mirror. So if I create an intersect object here, it's going to create um, doubles on this side so what I'm going to do instead is apply the mirror first so if you have any other uh, modifiers in this object and you just want to apply the mirror so go ahead and use the operate apply operate apply mesh operator then F9 to bring up the undo menu and or you can uh, toggle this and maximize it so uh, 
you can use the apply mirror only but since this is only using the mirror so no problem so right now there's no symmetry we can just copy this and we're going to use snapping selecting this face cursor selected and selecting this bunch of vertices selection to cursor keep keep offset okay because if you do, you use selection to cursor because this is not an object we are dealing with individual vertices if you use this it's gonna smash it essentially acted like a black hole it crushed all those vertices into a single point in that area so in edit mode to move all this as um, acting like it's uh, an object shift s selection to cursor keep offset okay then transform this and let's see if we can there we go so there's no need to really There's no need to re uh, reestablish the mirror, so we'll just leave it like that. Okay. Give it some Press stuff. We'll create another. So another operator in Blender, uh, vanilla function. Clicking this. Um, edge so the edge loops uh, needs to be closed or in closing a particular area and then you can use select boundary loop uh, no not that select loop in a region meaning that all faces inside that closed loop will be selected and you can go to faces and just control i to invert makes it really fast to select particular areas okay now we can create uh, the, the needle part again I'm not using any reference so <laughs> I'm just making something that to me looks like a syringe okay yeah. uh, draw cuts and wait, then the points. Draw cuts. Oh no, no. Let's use Boolean instead. Draw faces and press C on the surface here so the object gets created on this area based on the view angle. And let's try and create the needle needle area press one for difference boolean okay uh let's repeat that let's separate this geometry selection so it it is its own um geometry right now are we using symmetry no and let's close the hole pressing f also this part press f reach and let's create the needle part again c so that's the marker right there uh that's portrayed with the x uh, drawing and it also moves the 3d cursor with it with it okay let's apply the boolean you can use this or this but for more specific like it won't touch any other modifiers, just this. And let's see auto smooth if it's sharp here. So it's not. So let's just manually sharpen that. Edges, mark sharp. 
So even though it didn't meet it didn't meet the other smooth angle, we just uh, basically manually sharpened it. So this part here we can create. We can also create the the hole if you want. Uh, let's see. Let's try inset. Inset. And then oh, a bit thicker in. Inset, then scale. Okay. Now, before pushing it up, I'll just push it down first. Then scale this face to, to the Z axis. So I scaled it down instead of right here to create the hole. So I can see uh, what I'm doing. So right now it's straight. Let's push it up and create that vacuum. There we go. Okay. Um, now we can do some uh, panel cuts. We may <laughs> basically make this a sci fi object. I'm gonna use panel cuts. I'm gonna use the panel cutter add on to do this. Panel cut. So this only appears in the random flow menu if you have random flow and panel cut purchased. If you don't have panel cut, then it won't appear on the it will the panel cut will appear instead on the W uh using a W hotkey in the W specials menu right here. In object mode, uh, in edit mode, or in object mode right here. Well, got bevel. Let's make it. Let's make it wider. Okay. There we go. Here, press B. That will make it sci fi. That. Okay. And draw stuff here and here and here. So, uh, cut symmetry. Let's uh, let's merge this. Merge a wait. There's an offset. Probably because probably because of the cut. There we go. And increase the merge to merge those vertices. Okay. Sci fi. On the other part. Uh. Mm -hmm. Nice. Let's do one here too. Then of course, uh, create these details. Some of these details using floater normals, but you know, uh, sometimes it's really uh, better to see it in object mode. 
or in the geometry to see the changes in the geometry rather than using textures because with textures you have to activate the render and go whoops clip so ice tools actually had a tool to clip this automatically but nobody understood those tools Okay. This one here, and look at. You can also use panel, uh, random panels here, but I want it, I want this to be unimesh. I don't want the uh, non destructive results. So, in order to use random panels for this and not increase the subdivision, you might have to. Uh, increase the topology yourself in this area. So, using something like this and this, uh, selecting those faces, random panels inset, get rid of the center line, where play around with the panel size, the inset, and depth. Clip it and you can merge it using this toggle. Or you can use bevel, which is, of course, a destructive operator, but we'll just use inset. And you can play around with the randomization. Let's include this part. So the, so the sharp uh, edge, uh, so the, the sharp transition is in here instead of this one here, or the border of the uh, random panels. Result is here, not here. Okay. And basically just look out for something that works with the model that you're working with so you can play around with the seed and play around with the panel size as well so you might be wondering why there's no presets for this because this is um largely dependent on these on your selected topology and uh, if I create a preset that works for a particular topology, it might not work on something else. So I did not create presets for this. So it's, it's really not, there's really no need for presets for this one. Okay, this one, probably use this one and just. And then uh, after this, you can just remove the uh, topology that doesn't need the unwanted edges that is not needed to create the shape. But I'm going to add something else again so I can. No, wait. Just thinking of creating something here. In setting, then final cut bevel. Boundary edges only. This will be on the next update as well. Um, that's looking at this distance. That that is too micro. So I need to make it bigger at least in this distance. So it won't be wasted. That detail detail won't be wasted. Level. There you go. Wait, we'll just use the uh, 
old school inset. Give it a little margin, then Alt S. There we go. Okay, now we have this panel cuts making it, making it, uh, sci-fi. Okay, giving a sh chamfering or beveling this edge, just a single bevel, no segments. Okay, that's it for the body. Uh, I'm going to actually separate this. This glass part stage and create the so I added an edge loop here, then duplicated this, bring it down, and then separate this as another object. Select this, expand. I can't expand it because of the mirror. So what we're going to do instead is apply the mirror. And scale to expand. F and then wait the part that pushes the liquid inside. Let's bring out the glass and go to wire view. Okay, this part. Let's just bring it about in uh, this area here. And this one here, we're going to create a thickness. Uh, I'm just going to use step. Oh. I selected the. Um... <laughs> Don't matter. I'll just delete it. I didn't notice that I've selected the faces there also. Well, E bridge. Bridge. Fixed. So here I'm going to create a thickness that goes towards the inside. Draw, mod draw modifiers. Uh, you solidify, don't use mirror, it has no mirror. Oh, okay, use mirror. And offset is going inside. Negative one. There we go. And then let's go back to the pushing mechanism. Go to edit mode and selecting this face is here. E. To extrude and then out S. Probably set probably the same length as the probably uh, towards the thickness of the via of the glass area. Make this thinner. There we go. And auto smooth. And should I draw a line inside? No. Let's just keep it like that. This one, I'm going to close the holes. F, no, it's using mirror. Apply mesh and apply mirror only. So the solidify modifier is untouched. And press F to close the holes. Then we're going to create the <coughs> liquid. Okay, shift D to duplicate, then Alt S to make it smaller than the actual faces it was duplicated from. Then uh, we're going to grab these vertices and right here. So I said it's not going to be as full. Wait a minute, why is it going double? Right here. Wait, it's going double. What the?
that means wait for the pick with the glass oh Oh, this was the uh, wait. P forgot to separate the liquid. Then selecting the liquid, uh, bring it down past the uh, pushing mechanism. Not H. Okay. Uh, we're going to use the uh, first activate the um, HDRI uh, to provide us with the only light that we need and in film set set transparent so you can see the HDRI then um, testing out the operator shift Q shading up in materials or up in the grand shaders and then selecting everything or every mesh using as uh, creative flow say material branch metal and let's see what we get okay now let's uh, duplicate this Duplicate material and yes, branch metal. Name this glass. So it's still a copy of the branch metal, so we're gonna change it and play around with the um, with the rough uh, with the IOR and the roughness to create the glass so knocking this off because uh, the glass won't work if you have full metal metallicity Just remove this transmission So I should be seeing the glass, but I am not the strand. No. Okay. I think it's the base color. There we go. I'm going to knock out the normal too. So here I'm going to just uh, delete this and use quick dirt uh, to hopefully create a, a dirt effect on the glass.
Okay, um, use the glass here as well. And then duplicate the material. So we're, we're just gonna go with glass 0.001. Going to knock out the, oh, let's just use that. Okay, let's do the uh, Boolean trick. Hopefully it works. H. So I'm not going to draw. I'm just going to, okay, add a cube intersect on one. Make this larger and smaller. And then selecting this and this plain objects cut the ob cut, cut, uh, cut the active object. Wait, why didn't it it's supposed to be closed? Wait. Maybe I, I didn't uh, close the hole. Uh, no, the hole is closed. Oh let's knock off the solidify. There we go. Okay, so we want this to do, do that. We're going to create an empty. So we're going to create an empty. Uh, probably just, oops. Position of this object here. Maybe, um, or search selected. Uh, this is just a representation of an object. So, constraint for the Boolean object, add a constraint, cut for rotation, use the empty. So, uh, when you rotate this, it won't rotate. But if you have to rotate the constraint, it will rotate the, you will rotate this object here. So, we Parent this to this. Whenever it move, whenever this moves, it, you okay. Now we're going to change its origin point and create right at the cut line. So right here, and use this edge loop as a proxy position the 3D cursor and then hopefully you set origin to 3D cursor so when you rotate this well it still won't work maybe this one as well set origin to 3D cursor okay there we go <laughs> let's watch if this works uh, Create another empty in this area here. Plane axis and raise it above. So make this the pivot point right here of H. And then um, click on this, 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 the glass and the liquid inside and the needle here parent object let's see oh the liquid <laughs> the liquid is supposed to flow but it works 
on this side the liquid is supposed to overflow uh, it has its limits maybe we should bring this towards this maybe no uh, there we go It's not supposed to go past the stopper. Wait, let's try and is this the my god? I forgot to name it. I think something didn't. Oh, the stopper. Ah, uh, the pusher, the pushing mechanism. We should add it. Parent this to the empty as well. To the other empty. And also this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Pro save. No. So where do we parent this so it doesn't um actually yeah let's just leave it at this let's just let's just let's not parent it because it's only uh, copying the copying the rotation anyway and not the position so we're good if it doesn't move with the object okay Let's try and view it using material preview or Eve. <clears throat> oh no, it won't. No, doesn't work. But yeah, you can see that the liquid is acting like uh, it should. Did you see the steps that I did? I, I, um, I, um, rotation. I, um, uh, changed the origin point in the cut area right here. That's why I created the proxy edge to position the three cursor there. So, uh, the uh, cut object, um, the its origin point is in the wait it's been changed but yeah mostly on that spot mostly from that action so you might want to just do that to make the effect uh, act correctly so uh, it's probably just the boolean object that needs to be that uh, whose origin needs to be uh, placed on that spot and not the boolean to object uh, i mean boolean from uh, no the object that's being boolean great effect so you can recreate this uh, using um, glass uh, cups i mean or Battles, yeah, you can um, copy this effect to create this dynamic liquid inside the thing. And this is a faster because there's no physics involved. 
and it's just boolean and a bunch of constraints and parenting okay uh, so we've added in the grand shaders using the um shading feature now we're going to use bevel node or add the bevel node to the shaders but not the glasses only the grand shaders so hide those object and shift oh no wait 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 uh we're gonna join them first shift g and select similar so type oh and not this also hide this shift g type and all this okay we're going to save first and then use the operator join objects from the main body which is the cylinder you can select which object to join to okay and don't worry about this uh, you can still separate the object uh, you can still get the originals from the objects just uh, as you can see here the operator created this uh, vertex group for the main body and you can rename this all, of course so we have the syringe part the pushing mechanism and the f and the finger the holes for the fingers and there's a another operator for this if you want to restore the original objects uh objects that where the join objects operator have been used okay we um you can split it again and get it back to its original states get the objects back to its origin, original states it's going to it's going to use this vertex group to basically uh separate them and use the same vertex group name to name those objects again so basically everything is back to normal but now let's just since this is a solid object also joining will uh will apply the mirror okay so you just re-establish the mirror using auto mirror afterwards if you want the symmetry back again and We're going to add a bevel node. So this is the shader. It's going to add the bevel node right here and connect it. Connect the bump to the normal of the bevel node and then the normal of the bevel node connected to the normal of the BSDF to create the bevel effect. Okay, let's see. So you can see the um let's undo that you can see the edge sharpen oh, i mean sm s get a smooth or rounder so this is the add and this is the place basically let's use the bevel and this connects any other connection so let's just use add and I'm going to increase the samples to 12. And if you look right here, this uh, where the separate elements are, in this area right here. So you can see that the bevel effect uh, actually make it look like they are welded. So it's pretty cool. And this one as well. And yeah. And this one. As long as there is an overlap, you know this the uh this part here overlaps uh these two sets of faces overlaps in this area as long as there's an overlap, 
that effect won't work if these faces are in line with these faces there. So there must be an overlap for that uh, for the bevel shader uh, for the for the effect of the bevel node shader to work. Okay, let's pause it. And, uh, still thinking of parenting this. Where do you parent this? To move it. Oh, wait. Location. The constraint. Constraint. Capital location. Oh, let's use the eyedropper. There we go. So if we move the oh no. Oh wait, yeah. This. Yes. So within parent we constrain this object, which is the copy rotation for this object here. We constrained it using the location, copy location on the M uh, main pe uh, empty that is of course driving uh driving the all of the meshes or moving the used to transform all of the meshes uh location rotation scale you can scale it okay let's post this and just create a um so the textures that I'm using for this will be I got it from the um, Polyhaven or H H H -R -I Haven, I think. Is the what's the uh, what's their new name? So I don't have to really um, include it in the add-on. You can just download it from the site. Okay, I'm um trying to select uh texture the texture now. You can see the menu because uh OBS doesn't show that mean uh show auxiliary menus. Wait, unless of course I'm recording the entire screen. But right now I'm just recording the um blender window. Okay, let's try and post this. Like where's the ground at? And see the see the star of the show, the, the liquid side. The, it actually flattened out. Wait, uh, we're going to change the lighting to be more dramatic. And uh, select the uh, supposed to be liquid. Let's just rename this as liquid. Um, I'm going to change the um, the uh, what you might call this, the pink. I'm going to remove this and just make this green. And use this for the emission. Uh, I don't know why they did they they did this sub menus. Maybe it's just to make everything compact, look compact. And converter, uh, not that color ramp. That's somewhere around twenty. So increasing the strength. Will eventually make uh 
lose the color or the saturation, so something like 20. Change this to, wait, let's just see it. not working right now but it may be liquid can it look like a liquid I'm give, I'm giving it subsurface. Yeah, probably probably not. Okay, let's do some beauty shot. Go to truck lights, camera, lock the camera view.
to create an empty uh, on the so on the location of the 3D cursor and then use that for depth, depth of field activate depth of field the end focus So oh, the wait the effect of the blur is to There we go. Let's just match up the sand, the size. Let's make it look like it's kind of buried, kind of, kind of buried. Okay, let's try and render this using the lowest possible setting samples 32 probably 64 so see use nodes so you won't see the render window but let's just wait for it Okay, that's good. Um, let's see. So we have the procedural shading, which is the grand shaders, and uh, this is a uh, this is actually a low pixel resolution. So this could look better if the resolution was higher. And how to move the okay? So you can see the effect of the of the uh, bevel node shader right here just making the edges softer and we have the effects of the of the dirt grand shader in the glass we edited it and we zoom in zoom out the 
of the home like this okay so and the fun part uh, i think the fun part of this video is the figuring out how to uh, make the liquid move um, yeah i enjoyed that one i was trying to think of something to model with the add-on but also but also show you some uh, a technique that uh, you know you might not know yet so there's uh so uh, while learning the add-on if you have it you, you also learn some new stuff about blender what you can do with blender so i think that's good uh, that's a good way of creating this demo to, uh demo videos uh, we have the lines that make this sci-fi yes yeah i think this is good yeah really good so um I have a, a basic or rudimentary shader that creates glass cracks, but it doesn't look too realistic. So I'm going to research about that. And maybe in the future videos, we're going back to making glass and revisiting the uh, this uh, dynamic fluid again. Okay, so let's just zoom this in its rightful resol uh, zoom out resolution so it looks better. Yeah, I think this is, I think this is really good. Yeah, for something really simple, um, you can actually just repurpose this tutorial to create a really cool vial then surround it with like nature. And then do do some do some dramatic lighting, and then that's it. You're good to go. Okay, so yeah, and I think this is it for this demo video. And if you have any questions, use the comment section below or the links in the description. And by the way, um, uh, help me. Uh, reach 50,000 uh, subscribers. You can watch my tutorials and of course, um, what do you call it? Uh, recommend my channel to other people. So if, if I had, uh, I will be making more tutorials and so they can learn more about Blender even if they're not into the add-ons. Okay, so you can help me with that. Okay, so again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And again, um, if you have any questions, you can use the links in the description too. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.